Lily Swoman. I'm the voice of Pan, and I am with Cynthia Kranz. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kranz. I'm the voice of Chi Chi on Dragon Ball Z. And Mrs. Briefs, Uma's ma'am. <laughs> that one. That one. Welcome to Anime Adventures. This is the show where I talk with anime voice actors. first met last year, no, this year, yes. at Kamehacon. Yes, we did. It's crazy that we have been doing the same thing for so long, and that was our first time. And you're my grandchild. You're, I know, you're my grandmother. <laughs> you're my Dragon Ball grandmother. I know. I know. I should have, I was telling her before, I should have pulled a scene or something that we could act out. But, we'll, but it was so on the spur of the moment. It was. I know. We, it was spur of the moment where I, I hunted her down. Yes. And I said, you have to be on camera she and do an interview. Us. I stopped she did. You. She crashed the convention. I did. I crashed the convention. <laughs> yes. I did not get an invitation to no. the party, so I crashed mm. the convention. I'm so upset. We hate that. I know. Yeah. Didn't you? I could tell. I saw the tears. Like, <laughs> have to talk to Elise. <laughs> but it was fun because we, like, I of course knew of her, and then we were on a panel together where it was like the women of Dragon Ball. Yep. And it was so much fun. And I walked away. I was like, Cynthia is awesome. I love oh her. I felt yes. the same way. Oh. Like a little love fest little girl, going on. Little crush going on. Yes. Well, let's talk about your characters. Let's talk about Chi Chi. Okay. So, it was, did you have so much fun? Was she your first anime role to book? Yes. Tell me that story, how you actually okay. booked So, I was just a working actor in Dallas, uh -huh. and I did have an agent at the time, but I didn't get it through the agency. Um, I worked on a sketch comedy show back when there was cable access. Really? And um, so it was, you did comedy? Yeah, as it well? was a great show. It was called the Bobby Jack Pack Comedy Show. Show. That's awesome. And the point was to make fun of bad television. So they wanted the editing bad. They wanted the acting bad. The props bad. And then they would flash to people with the remote in their hands. And then. So the show was just snippets. It could be an infomercial, it could be a wrestling show, there was a soap opera, lots of just bad, but it was so much fun. Um, and one of my friends there worked for the Dallas Observer and he placed the open call ad for Funimation. Okay. And he called me not once, not twice, but three times telling me to go audition for this. And I had no voiceover experience, so I certainly thought there was no way I would have a chance. I, I didn't, and he didn't even, we didn't even know what anime was. It was just some cartoon at some random bank building in North Richland Hills, Texas. Funimation was in a bank building. Yeah. It was. Started there. And so, as we learned yesterday, everybody's process was different. Oh, that's right. So they did a panel. I didn't get to see it. Oh, you but were in on that one. Yeah. I wasn't in There were it. 10 of us. Ten people. And, and all our stories were different as to how we got to Funimation. Like, there were callbacks, apparently. I never got called back. Oh. I they just, were just like, boom, you got this. But what they had us do was, um, they played all the Canadian actors. Oh, uh -huh. And showed us uh, the pictures of the characters. And then had us try to voice match all the females and the oh, males and all the okay. males. Okay, I've heard this. Yeah. And so, but the ironic thing is, as most of you know, Chi Chi's are always mad and yelling. Do I know you? Oh, oh. Not one of those scenes was that. They picked probably the one scene in the whole series where she's like, I remember it was something like, oh well, boys will be boys, which is so not really? Chi Chi. So in the audition, you didn't even do any yelling? How did they know I could yell? Because mostly she's, <laughs> and it's a horrible sound, the yell. It's in a very ugly place in my voice. Yeah, so how did they know that you they could didn't. yell? They didn't. And when we first did it, we we tried to sound as we were recording like the Canadian actors had. Yeah. And their version of Chi Chi was more maternal, soft spoken. Oh really? And it, we morphed it into what Chris Sabat said. No, this girl is rough. Like she's <laughs> trash. 
I mean, she's a princess, but she's like the princess of trash. So let's make her really, really rough. And really? So it sounds nothing like what it. So let's says. hear some yelling. I mean, I know people oh know my it. God. But um, can you think of anything? Well, it's usually go. go! <laughs> that stopped the room. Let sorry, me just sorry, say. sorry. I'm I made sorry. her do it. <laughs> I made her do it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it got very quiet at the convention, let me just say. <laughs> um, so yeah, she, yeah, she often does lines in that voice, uh -huh. which is nothing like the, oh yeah, boys will be boys, so I don't know. That sounds so innocent, yes, boys will be boys. <laughs> and then I love this character too, it's so different. It is different. Yes. That's Mrs. Briefs, um, Bulma's stepmother. Mm -hmm. And she's just a sweet little bimbo. Like she is just, and she's a flirt, and she always has her eyes closed, and she's like, you know, um, you're so handsome. Would you like a snack? <laughs> oh, you boys, you know. And or she's hanging up laundry. She's like, la 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 la. I mean, she is a ditz. And <laughs> I really wish she was on more because I think she's a hoot. She's fun. She I love fun. her. She's fun. And you've done more than that. Like, you've got all of this great stuff here. Tell me about some other fan favorites you okay. have. Um, the most popular one is mm -hmm. Photon from Yu Yu Hakusho. Then he lost the mirror, so I refurbished them all. But after that, I forgot when I left them in my pink kimono, because we all know I never wear that anymore. <laughs> yes. And um, so she is basically the Grim Reaper. She's very bubbly. Which is, yeah, it's very crazy. bubbly and very silly and very, you know, she's just uh, the opposite of what you picture the angel of death. But Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yes, I would, I would say I don't usually picture the Grim Reaper like this. So, um, in her, you know, bingo, you'll win the prize. I mean, she's just like, like the hero uh, on the first day of the show, he, he's killed in an accident saving mm -hmm. a child. And he's a 14-year-old boy, and he's been a naughty boy, so he's got some work to do on the other side before going to heaven. And he doesn't know he's dead yet. And he's like, you know, um, trying to put it together. And then he says, "Unless I'm dead," and that's when she's like, "Bingo, you win the prize." And um, so I liked her. She was quirky. Quirky, yeah. Very quirky. Quirky is a good one. Um, I love Mitzi on Shin Shan. Yes. Shin Shan was Anna May's version of Family Guy, Simpson. Mitzi talks like this. She's a nerd. Um, this is Mitch mm -hmm. from Case Closed or Detective Conan. It just depends. Yeah, I did I, a role on that I too, Yoko you, Okino. Okay. Uh, pop star. Yeah, I know. I you, remember, yeah, I remember. You do. I, I was part of the kids that were solving the mysteries. Yes. And Mitch is nerdy. Like, he don't, like, so he always sounds like he's got a stuffed up nose. He's like, Escar, go. Ew, those are so scary. <laughs> After the cave ride, chili dogs, then cave ride again, we're out of money. Ah, uh, leave it to me, you guys. I know how to write it for free. You know, he's always trying to follow the rules, and he has a crush on Amy, and um, I think Monica voiced Amy. Oh, really? And do you do a lot of boy voices? I, that's, or that's... Uh, only a couple, and when they call me in, I, I always try to vary it. Yeah. But they're like, no, we want Mitch, so. Oh, really? So... I know, I think I've done one boy voice. I know. It was kind of the same thing, like a little stopped up. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we think little boys have stuffed uh, I don't know, because I don't know many boys with stopped up noses all the time. But somehow, mine do. Mine too, so yeah, that's a bitch. Um, yes. And then, who do we have here? That is um, Panina from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh, that's so cool. Let me try it on. You can't. And why not? And she shoots cannons out of her knee. And she was a little thief, so she's she was my first tough girl to get to play. Oh, really? I mean, Chi Chi's tough, but she doesn't have action scenes. Yeah, in a different she way. She was a fighter in her former life. So this girl was fun for me. Um, let's see. Ah, this is from yes. um, One Piece, Bellamy. Hey, here you go, girl. It's a custom made Bellamy original. Nice try. That's a stinky hand me down. Again, a mom figure. I'm uh -huh. the adopted mom of Nami. Okay. 
and she's really tough and always has a cigarette dangling out of her mouth. <laughs> and her voice and does that just... affect the way that you do your voice? It doesn't, but when I did this one, uh -huh. She had a lollipop in her mouth all the time, so I had to do all of my lines with my pinky Oh, did in my you mouth. really? I did. All my lines like this. Uh, so you're like, that I'm going to wash my hands. Wash the hands my a lot. <laughs> yes. And then... These are so fun. See, did you um, always know you wanted to do voiceover or no. acting? How did I, you get I, into well, it? Well, my, my sister was uh, an award-winning actress in high right school. Over there. And I would go and watch her in competitions and watch her plays. And I wanted to be up there so bad, my hands would break out in a sweat. Oh, really? And our grandmother took us, she had season tickets to Fort Worth, Maine. Casa Manana was like the big theater back then. Yeah. And so we grew up, our music was musicals. That's okay. the records that we play. Yeah. Um, and, that, and my hands, again, just to be on the chorus, I wanted to be up there so bad. Oh, really? But it didn't occur to me to study. I mean, I took drama in high school, and I took some acting classes in college. But when I got out of school, I went to Ole Miss, and I came back to Fort Worth and just started auditioning for local community theater and then taking on-camera classes and commercial classes. And then eventually I had enough stuff to get a resume and a headshot and an agent. Back then, that's all you needed. There was no reel. There was no <laughs> demo. There was just, just like, here's my picture. Resume. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. In fact, it was stapled to the back of it. Like, yeah. Um, so did you, you didn't study it in college. What did you study? I did. Oh, you did? I did take. I had to audition to take classes. Okay. Um, but I, I majored. It's so random. I like His, random. History and minored in psychology. Okay. Now, mind you, Ole Miss is known for journalism. And I love to write. And it did not occur to me to freaking take journalism and then maybe get a minor in radio, TV, film. No, no, no. Let's just keep taking history classes until finally that's just what we're going to major in. And then for okay. a living, we're going to be a real estate agent and a pet sitter and an actress. <laughs> well spent money, mom and dad. <laughs> but I wouldn't trade my time there for anything. It yeah. was amazing. Well, it made you who you are today, right? It's, it certainly factored into it. <laughs> My sister is over there making faces. <laughs> she yeah. Too bad we don't have a third camera that we oh can have, like, put on her sister. I the know. Whole time. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't. It didn't occur to me until I was in college that I wanted to act professionally. Yeah. But I knew I didn't want to move off to either coast. I auditioned. Oh, okay. I did audition and get accepted into the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And my mom decided she didn't want me to go away to New York. I think she thought I wouldn't get in. So she took me up there and I auditioned. And I got the letter and then she's like, um, yes she's like, or oh, no. no. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, um, but I, I knew I just wanted to act professionally and living in the Dallas area gave me the opportunity to live where I love and still work. Yeah. Good but point. I knew I didn't want to count on it for a living, so I got my real estate license. Okay. And do you still do real estate now? Yes, I focus on apartment locating. Oh, so, okay, nice. um, so there's no contracts to be written, no high pressure. It's, you know, um, it's it. All my gigs are straight commission, but they all work together well. So it's kind of like acting. It's it, almost a straight commission job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I like them all. I'm, I board people's animals in my house. Oh. Um, my sister does the house sitting and farm sitting gigs, and then if someone wants me to keep their pets, I do. And wow. And so it all it just all seems to work well together. I one of the classes I took um, had an actress come in from LA and said she's someone that helped me figure out about real estate. She's like, be sure that you have another job opportunity that you really like, but it's flexible mm, because auditions absolutely. and work are usually during business hours, so. Yeah, that was smart. I'm glad, and it was my mom that suggested it. She got tired of me waiting tables, <laughs> and she's like, why don't you just do real estate? And I said, okay, and next thing I knew, I was in real estate class, and. And the rest is Lots history. Lots of thought has gone into my career, as you can see. That's good. Okay, though. history. Okay, mistake. <laughs> okay, Venomation. Okay. <laughs>
Well, sometimes that's how it happens. I have bumbled along and it's worked out just great. Good. So, so I didn't get to Funimation until 99. Yeah. Got my agent in 93. So I was 30 years old. I didn't have children and I did not know what anime was. Well, that's, that's got to be encouraging because a lot of people think, oh, am I too old? Am I too this? Am I too that? No. no and not start like any time. And not just with anime. Like, what I learned, I didn't get as much work in my 20s for commercials as I did in my 30s when I could be a mom. The older you get in the Dallas area, I mean, if you look at the commercials, it's the acorn sticker lift. It's the, it's the <laughs> you know, the rascal scooter. I mean, like... Yes. Like, it's not bad to get old in the commercial market. If you that's can work you... forever. <laughs> that's true. So, they need all ages. Kent is totally making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will We've be got... the old lady in the, in the diapers. In my diapers, <laughs> eating a soft cracker. <laughs> on my way to the acorn steer lift. <laughs> we need, like, a bunch of cameras. Here, you want to come join? <laughs> come join our conversation. We... Too bad we don't have like a true multi-camera shoot. To the left of registration when you came in. Here he goes. Uh, Kenny James, the voice of Dr. Sir. I'm just going to roll up here on the grass. <laughs> 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 this is going to be still in a little drive-by. <laughs> to the left of where you came in the registration. sitcom. <laughs> well, how about, why don't we say goodbye? <laughs> in, a, in a character voice. Okay. okay. Um, which character should I be? <laughs> which character would you, you pick? It is oh uh, my goodness. up to Actors you. Choice. Or um, all of them. I think I'll just do <laughs> little Mitch. So. Okay. Bye. 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 It's my imitation of her. Bye. With our stuffed up little boy noises. Yeah, stuffed up little boy, because all little boys have stuffed up noses. Bye. See you later. Bye.